Bethany Turner, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Anthropology. I'm a biological anthropologist and a particular kind of biological anthropologist called a bioarchaeologist, which means that I study archaeological human skeletal remains, and we're sitting right now in my lab, which does various microscopic and biochemical analyses of human bones and teeth and hair and anything else that we're lucky enough to have preserved so that we can talk about what individuals were eating and whether they were moving between regions during their lives, whether they were healthy. Um, and I mainly look at remains from ancient states and namely in Peru. Um, the reason I like anthropology and the reason I've always wanted to be an anthropologist is because anthropology is not just about speaking truth to power, it's also speaking data to power. And that's because anthropology is a social science through and through. It doesn't matter how you get your data, if it's based on years of ethnography, if it's based on archival research, if it's based on laboratory measurements, if it's based on excavations, data are data. And what that means is that we get to not only talk as advocates about lots of different cultural groups, we not only get to become familiar with them, but we also get to speak pretty substantively about it. And it's based on often what those individuals are telling us in one way or another. And in this age of misinformation, that's incredibly important. So I tend to really like what I do because even though it might seem ghoulish that we dig people up and we take them out of their graves and then we bring them to labs and we do stuff with them, um, I like to think of it as repatriating some aspect of people's identities because often these are folks from either non-literate societies where it's not that no one could read or write, it's that no one needed to read or write. Um, and so there aren't written records. And sometimes there are written records, but they are written by people who weren't particularly concerned about getting things right or being accurate. And so you get a very biased idea of who a lot of people were. And so in a lot of ways, they passed anonymously into history. And by studying their skeletal remains, often we can talk about their lives and we can talk about their experiences in a way that we wouldn't be able to otherwise. So repatriation is effectively returning something. And so when I talk about repatriating someone's identity or aspects of it, it means giving them back some of their voice. And that might sound patronizing or that might sound even ridiculous the idea of giving a voice back to someone who's been dead for a really long time but in the work that we do we get to talk about what individuals were doing we get to talk about what they were eating and what diseases they had and we get to talk about whether or not they were getting enough to eat or if their diet was healthy enough for them. We get to talk about whether or not someone abused them or they suffered a whole lot of accidental trauma. Um, we get to study how it was they were put into a grave. And that tells you a whole lot about what other people thought of them, whether or not they were carefully placed in a grave, whether or not they had grave goods with them, whether or not they were pushed face down into a pit. Um, and so this idea of repatriating in that sense means you give them back a little bit of who they were in the eyes of everyone today. You get to tell a little bit more of their story separate from what other people might have said or not said about them. Um, the idea of repatriating remains is something that's also a big part of anthropology because to return skeletons, to return samples to people's descendants is a way of respecting them. It means thank you for letting me study these remains even if they were dug up decades ago by people who didn't ask for permission, because now we do, we ask for permission. And if someone says no, we respect that. Um, 
but that wasn't always the case. And so sometimes what I've been able to do is actually give back remains that I didn't dig up, but that have, were either in a museum or were in a lab and I got to be the one to give them back. And they could get reburied, they could be put in a cultural center. They, pretty much the descendants get to do with those remains what they feel is appropriate. And that's a big part of what we do too. It's recognizing that for especially historically marginalized groups in the South, that often means African Americans, that means Native Americans. Where I work in Peru, that means a lot of the indigenous population. For a lot of them, the past isn't even the past. And so to be able to study the past means we have to also interact with the present and we get to do that and that's pretty awesome. And so I really enjoy doing that. And often too, I will look for the remains that are already in a museum that someone already dug up. Because for me, there's a real ethical imperative to repatriate either some aspect of someone's identity or to repatriate the remains to dissent groups so they can go back into the ground. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about my research. That's why even though a lot of the day-to-day -day of my research involves doing the same pipetting motion through dozens of test tubes or filtering samples through these tiny little filters. And a lot of it looks boring, but the whole purpose behind it is anything but.